In cases where you need to factor out the GCF, the directions may just read factor completely. With this first example, I'll show a factored form of each term just to make it very clear that I'm dividing out the greatest factor that is common to each term. So I'm not going to write the prime factorization, but I'll show a factored form. So if you look at the factored form of each term, for the coefficients of 20, 12, and 28, I think you can see that 4 is the greatest value that is common to each term. And for our variable, the greatest number of a's that I can get out of each term is a single A. I can't get two A's out of this. I can't get three A's out of this. I can only get one A. The greatest common factor of each term is going to be 4A. So I could divide out a 4A divide out a 4a and divide out a 4a. But if I divide out 4a from each term, I'm going to change the value of the original expression. So in order to preserve the value of the original expression, I have to show that I'm willing to multiply 4a right back in. If I divide out the 4a, I'd be left with 5a squared. If I divide out the 4a, I'll be left with 3a. And for our last term, if I divide out the 4a, I'll be left with 7. So this shows that I factored out the greatest common factor from each term. And you can see, if I sent it back in to each term, I would get right back where I started. So obviously, writing the factored form of each term is a lot of work. Normally, you'll just look at the coefficient of each term and think of the largest number that you can divide out of each one, in this case, a 2. And then you look at your variables, and the most x's we can get out of each term is x to the fourth. So we will divide by 2x to the fourth and divide out our 2x to the fourth. If we're dividing it out, we have to show that we're willing to multiply it back in. So dividing by 2 would leave me with a 5, and dividing out x to the fourth would leave an x squared. And then dividing by 2 would leave me with 9. Dividing out x to the fourth cancels out. So I'm simply left with a 9 here. And again, if you sent this back in to each term, you'd get right back where you started. Looking at number 3, first the coefficients. We can divide 7 out of each term. And then looking at the b variable, the most we could get out is b to the third from each term. 
And finally, looking at the C variable, the most we can get out is C to the first, or simply C. And again, I need to show if I'm going to divide this out of each term, I'm willing to multiply it back in to each term. So if I divide by 7, up here I'll be left with 3. Divide by b to the third, I'll be left with b to the third. And if I divide out c, I'll be left with c to the fourth. So for our first term, we're left with 3b to the third, c to the fourth. Here the sevens cancel out. You're just left with a 1, so you don't have to write it. Divide out b to the third. You're left with b to the first. And the c's cancel. So all that's left standing here is b to the first, or simply b. And looking at our last term, divide by 7, divide by 7, leaves us with 2. b to the thirds cancel. And here when you divide out the c, you're just left with c to the first in the numerator. So for our last term, we have 2c. And it might be a little trickier to tell, but if you multiplied this back into each term, you would get right back where you started. For number 4, do we have a GCF? First, looking at the coefficients, we can divide a 5 out of each term. And then looking at our variables, we can divide out x to the first from each term. That's what's common to each term. Showing that if we're going to divide out 5x, we can also multiply it back in. So if we divide by 5 and divide by 5, we're left with a 2. Dividing by x, subtract 1, you're left with x to the 5th. Divide by 5, divide by 5, you're left with 4. Dividing out your x, subtract 1, x to the 3rd. Dividing by 5's leaves you with 3. Dividing out your x, subtracting 1, leaves you x to the 1st. Here when you divide by 5 and divide by 5, you're just left with a 1. Then you divide by x and divide by x, you're left with a 1 as well. Normally we don't have to write the 1 because there's something else left standing. But in the case where there's nothing else remaining, you have to show that the 1 is there so that when you multiply your 5x back into each term, you would again have your original negative 5x. So what's left standing? For the first term, we have 2x to the fifth. Bring down that negative. 4x to the third. Bring down the positive. 3x to the first, or simply 3x. Bring down your negative. And finally, all that's left standing is a 1. So again, to emphasize why this 1 is so important, when you send your 5x back into each term, you're supposed to be able to get back to your original polynomial. If I didn't have a 1 here, I wouldn't have any way to get back the negative 5x. So factoring out the GCF is an important tool to have when you're trying to factor 
any polynomial. And given the wide variety of possible polynomials that you need to factor, it's helpful to have a little bit of a road map to refer to when you're given the task of factoring. So I'll call this rules for factoring, although they're not hard and fast rules. But the very first one, you should always see if there is a GCF. If there's a greatest common factor, you should factor it out. Once you factor it out, you begin to pay attention to how many terms you have. So the second rule is do you have two terms? I'll cover what happens in this case in another video. The third rule is asking if you have three terms. If you have three terms, there's basically two different situations. The first is that it leads off with a coefficient of 1. Notice nothing's written, so the leading coefficient is 1. In the case of three terms, this is basically the easiest situation because you know that you're going to have an x for your first term in the factored form, because that would give you the x squared. There's more to do to get the rest of this, but it's the easier case. The more complicated one is when we have a number other than 1 in the first position. This is the only one I'll be addressing in this particular video. So looking at number 5, here's our polynomial. Referring to the rules for factoring, number one is, do we have a GCF? Yes. Then we need to factor it out. So we can get a 4 out of each term. And with the first term, if we divide out the 4, we'll be left with x squared. And dividing by 4, this would give us 21. So once you've factored out the greatest common factor, you continue down the list. Do you have two terms? No. Do you have three terms? Yes. Is it the case where the leading coefficient is 1? Yes. So we're going to see if we can factor this further. There's no guarantee, but you do need to check. So in checking to see if we can factor this polynomial, we're going to ignore this 4 for a bit, and we'll just have to keep up with it when we put our final answer. So looking at this trinomial, if we can factor it, for x squared, we would have x times x. Looking at the 21, I'll show all the factors. Well, that's a short list. And can we get a sum of positive 10? That wouldn't work. But if we had a positive 3, a positive 7, that would add to give us positive 10. So you simply plug in the positive 3 and the positive 7. So this is the factored form of what's in the brackets, and we simply need to bring down the 4. And you don't need brackets anymore, because this is showing it's to multiply. So here we factored completely the original polynomial. You can call it a polynomial or a trinomial. So looking at number 6, Number one on our list, do we have a GCF? Yes. We could divide out a 3 from each coefficient, and then y squared, because I can divide that out of each variable. 
showing that if I divide it out, I could put it back in there. I'll indicate multiplication with the bracket here. So looking at our first term, the threes would cancel. And dividing by y squared would leave us with subtracting 2, y squared in the numerator. Here, dividing by 3 would leave us with 2. Dividing out the y squared, subtracting 2, would leave us y to the first. And with our last term, dividing by 3, dividing by 3, this would become 15. And then the y squareds cancel. So for the first term, we're left with y squared. For the second term, we have 2y. And for the third term, we have 15, no variable. So I'll close out my bracket. Then continuing down our list, do we have two terms? No. Do we have three terms? Yes. Is the leading coefficient 1? Yes, because this is outside the bracket. So I'm going to see if I can factor this. And again, I'll ignore this for a little bit. I simply have to bring it down if I'm able to factor this. So if I could factor it, the first term would certainly be y because they would multiply to give me the y squared. And then looking at the 15, let's see all the factors. Again, that's a short list. Looking at the sign of the last term, can I get a difference of positive 2? This factor pair would not work. But if I had a positive 5 and a negative 3, I could combine them to get a positive 2. So I simply plug in negative 3, positive 5, and remember to bring down the 3y squared. So given our original polynomial, here we have factored completely. So looking at number 7, if we're to factor completely, first you look for a GCF, and there is a 5 you can get out of each term. But in particular with this case, we have a negative value with our first term. It's more complicated to factor with a negative in front. So generally, if the first term is negative, we factor out that negative. So instead of just factoring out a 5, we're going to factor out negative 5. So negative divided by a negative, this first term is now going to be positive. The 5's would cancel. And we'd be left with x squared. Looking at the second term, It'll be positive divided by negative, so that would leave us with a negative. And if you divide by 5, you'll have 8x. Looking at the third term, negative divided by negative is going to be positive. And then 60 divided by 5 is 12. Once we factor out the GCF, in this case the negative GCF, we look at what's left in parentheses and continue down the list. Do we have two terms? No. Do we have three terms? Yes. Is the leading coefficient 1? Yes. Can we factor this? We will see. Could certainly take care of x squared with x and x. For the 12, we'll look at the factors. 
and see if we can get a sum of negative 8. So these two couldn't get us there. If we had a negative 2 and negative 6, that would give us a sum of negative 8. And these two can't get us there. So we simply plug in negative 2 and negative 6. You have to remember to bring down what you factored out, which is a negative 5. So here we factored completely the original polynomial. So finishing up number 7, that's basically what I have to say about the greatest common factor and also factoring when the greatest common factor is the first step. Number 8 should be a review from factoring polynomials introduction. Number 9 is very similar except that I've added the y variable here. We would term 8 as having one variable and we would term 9 as having two variables. If you'd like to pause the video and try solving number 8 on your own, that would be fine. I'll solve it in just a moment. Leading off with the x squared coefficient of 1, if we try to factor this, for x squared we can take care of that with simply x and x. And now for the 18, we'll look at all the factors. Here are all the factors for 18. Since the last value is positive, we're looking for a sum of positive 11. This won't get us there. If we had a positive 2 and a positive 9, they would add to give us a positive 11. And these two cannot help. So we simply plug in the plus 2 and plus 9. So here's the factored form of the original polynomial. And now to number 9, paying attention to how this starts out, x squared with a coefficient of 1, we're going to see if we can factor this. We can take care of the x squared with simply x and x. We can take care of this y squared by simply putting a y and a y because when we multiply the last terms, we're going to get the y squared. Now we can turn our focus to these coefficients. For the 18, I'll list all the factors. Since the last term's positive, I'm looking for a sum of positive 11. These won't get me there, but if I have positive 2 and positive 9, I can add them and get positive 11. These two cannot help. So I simply put in the positive 2 and the positive 9. So not only do the polynomials look very similar, other than I've included the y variable, the factored forms are very similar. Number 10 will be the last one in the video. If you'd like to pause and try factoring this on your own, that would be fine. But in this case, since we have y squared with our xy in the middle, we can also put y here and y here. And now we just have to worry about these coefficients. So we take 30 and list all the factors. Four won't work, five works and we have all the factors. Noting that the last term's negative, we want a difference of positive 7. So these can't help, these can't. If we had a positive 10 with a negative 3, we could subtract and get a positive 7. These two cannot get us there. So we simply plug in our negative 3 and our positive 10. And again, you can always check your factored form. If you multiply this out, you will get back to your original polynomial.
if you would like some practice with the concepts covered in this video. As long as you're at my website, I have 20 problems, each with detailed answers.